I heard three loud... From his hometown of Duluth in Minnesota, one of those questioning critics of the official version of events is Professor James Fetzer. The resurgence of interest in the death of JFK had repercussions when Congress passed the JFK Records Act in 1992 that created a five civilian member board entrusted with the responsibility to review and declassify documents that were held by the CIA, the Secret Service, the Office of Naval Intelligence, and so forth. We know from its own report that it had some significant failures. For example, and the Secret Service, which deliberately destroyed motorcade records that would have revealed that the motorcade in Dallas was a travesty, a violation of at least 15 different Secret Service policies for presidential protection. This behavior on their part raises the most serious and disturbing questions about their complicity in the entire affair. From the moment he arrived in Dallas, the president's protection was suspect, according to Vince Palomara, a Secret Service expert. There was last minute changes invoked by the Secret Service involving President Kennedy's security. Specifically, agents were told not to ride on or near the rear of the limousine. Now these orders were funneled from the assistant special agent in charge of the White House detail, who was the planner of the Texas trip, Floyd Boring, to one of his assistants, a shift leader by the name of Emery Roberts, who was in charge of the follow-up car. You can see an agent, Henry Ribka, doing his normal duty, jogging beside the limousine, when in the follow-up car, you can see Emery Roberts stand up and wave him back. And you can see a very perplexed agent, Ribka, waving his arms in the air several times in seeming disgust. There was another last minute change made at Love Field, invoked by the Secret Service. The Dallas Police Department motorcycle outriders were told not to be beside the car. It went from four to six down to a measly two riders on each side. And to add insult to injury, they were pushed further back in the motorcade by those agents not being by the car, by those motorcycle officers not being in the position. It opened up President Kennedy to a field of fire from in front and from the rear. In the months before the trip to Texas, there had been a growing number of threats against the president's life. Despite the increase in conspiratorial activity in the month of November 1963, in the apparent red alert the Secret Service appears to be under in response to this activity, the agency acts in the opposite fashion and actually reduces the security and acts like no threats on the president's life are occurring. Why? Uniquely on that day in Dallas, the press, the camera crews, Kennedy's military aide, who would normally sit in the front of the president's car, and even his personal physician, were all relegated to the rear of the motorcade by the Secret Service. In a conventional motorcade, the president would be somewhere in the middle, surrounded by security and the press. In this case, the presidential limousine was set right out in front of every other limousine, which of course is the reason why the Secret Service destroyed the records of its own motorcades when they were asked for them by the Assassination Records Review Board. The most suspicious behavior by shift leader Emery Roberts was to be at the time of the shooting in Dealey Plaza. Tragically, he actually ordered the agents not to move during the heart of the shooting. Agent Sam Kinney, who drove the fob car, admitted as much to me and told me, quote, exactly right, end quote. And all these deficiencies begin and end with the Secret Service because they were the prime movers. They were the ones who were directing the security arrangements from Washington up to and including in the heart of Dallas during security meetings. They were the ones that gave out assignments vetoed or approved of security arrangements so the buck stops with them i have a book coming out called survivor's guilt the secret service and the failure to protect president kennedy it is the first time the secret service has ever been investigated in research in such depth hundreds of footnotes and it's primary source information it's not theories it's fact it's what these agents told me it's what they said and did it's based off films and photos, documental, documentable evidence, documents, books, whatnot. But it's not just secondary sources, it's not theory, it's fact. It's what these agents told me. Survivor's Guilt, The Secret Service, and the Failure to Protect the President, coming out September 1st, 2013, available for pre-order on Amazon.com. Everything is being uh, uh, accepted.
accepted as far as what PPD is doing and will continue to do. News footage was black and white then, but several amateur photographers caught the motorcade on color film. Channel 4 had two reporters along the route. Bob Huffaker was downtown. In response to political staff, agents who usually surround the limousine were pulled away so people could see the president better. One reacted by throwing up his hands in disgust. Three times he protested what would prove to be a fatal error. Kennedy was killed by the third shot from a sniper rifle well after agents, if they had been nearby. Agents who usually surround the limousine were pulled away so people could see the president better. One reacted by throwing up his hands in disgust. Three times he protested what would prove to be a fatal error. Kennedy was killed by the third shot from a sniper rifle, well after agents, if they had been nearby. So I interviewed a guy called Clint Hill, who was the bodyguard, if you see the footage of the uh, of the cavalcade yeah. and the bullets coming, he's the guy that jumps on the back. Yeah. Uh, he's actually, he was Jackie Kennedy's bodyguard. Yeah. On and she, Why were the Secret Service on the bumper that day? They were removed. You can go on, on internet That's and not see what it. he told me. They were removed from the bumper That's and the Secret he... Service guy turns to his well, Jesse, boss and goes, what? Jesse, here's my point. And they took him off the bumper. The... Why did they change the way that... For Dallas only, the way the motorcycles were lined up. They put four of them way in front and the others all behind. They didn't go in the standard wedge, which was used in the two previous days before. But in Dallas, that changed. They got them out of the way to give a clear shooting lane. Let me finish my point. Clint Hill, who was there and was on the back of that limo, he, he wasn't said, on the back of it. He jumped on the back of it. Yeah, from a car way behind and it Correct. took him how long would to you, get there. But he believed... Lee Harvey also added alone. Now, me, why do you know more than he does? Well, because of the fact there's a whole lot of information. Um, there is so obvious when you read this book. I'll let you people be the judge. Read the book. It's so obvious. The, the Secret Service. Well, who do you wait, think did it? The Secret Service protected Kennedy more after death than they did when he was alive because they illegally took the body out of Texas. Autopsy by law should have gone on there. Lyndon Johnson, the car was a crime scene. Everybody knows tape goes around a crime scene until forensic gets through with it. Monday morning, that car was in Michigan being refurbished, already moved. Just no one was allowed to see the car. Who? The most painful theories point fingers at the agents themselves. I read where Pontius was part of it because uh, he disappeared after Houston. A conspiracy for the agents to shoot the president. I mean, this is off the wall. One of the agents shot him.